Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jackie and I'm a self-taught software engineer with a background in mechanical and aerospace engineering. I currently work for Amazon Prime Video and in this video I'm going to go over the steps that I personally would take if I had to learn how to code all over again. I learned to code at home by myself while I was working as a graduate aerospace engineer at an aerospace company. I had practically no knowledge of computer science when I started learning. I had a bit of exposure to MATLAB. If you've studied any kind of traditional STEM degree, you probably know MATLAB. I had no idea what a hash map or a linked list was. However, I think that my traditional engineering background was a big help to me because I had good analytical skills and a very methodical approach to problem solving, and that helps you a lot when you're learning how to code. One thing which is very crucial when you're deciding whether you want to learn how to code is to evaluate the different fields that exist in programming. The way that these are categorized and organized is very subjective, but this is how I personally tend to categorize them in my own mind. First, we have data science, and in my mind, I kind of include everything related to machine learning and data analytics and deep learning into this category. Then we have web development, which is everything related to front-end, back-end, and full-stack development. And this includes web and mobile apps. And then we have software engineering. When I think of software engineering, I think about system architecture, distributed systems, also on the web, and operating systems, among other things. There is embedded systems engineering, and this is everything related to robotics and embedded systems like control systems. This is basically everything where you're writing software to control hardware. Then we have cybersecurity, everything related to hacking, penetration testing, etc. And finally, another big category is gaming, which is where we develop games. There are more, but I think these are arguably the biggest and most well-known areas of programming. And the first task we have when deciding to learn how to code is to try to narrow it down into one of these areas. Sometimes a field can seem very interesting in theory, but then when you actually look at the practical tasks that you would be executing in the field, they might not be that appealing to you. So you really should try to drill down as best as you can. Speaking for myself, I was particularly torn between data science and software engineering. I ended up deciding on software engineering probably because of Martin Kleppmann and his book, Designing Data Intensive Applications. I read this book while I was learning how to code and I thought that distributed systems seemed very interesting and that's what attracted me to the software engineering field. So for the purpose of this video, I put together a study plan which is split into five parts this plan is more focused on the foundations rather than highly specific skills, but I designed it in a way that I think would motivate you to keep going so that it's not too frustrating upfront because coding can be very frustrating when you're just starting out. Trust me, I know because I've been there. There are a lot of great resources online which can help you learning how to code. For example, I recently found a free ebook which was very well constructed about learning Python for beginners, and I found another one about how to build your first web app. Both ebooks are offered for free by HubSpot and they cover the basics as well as some coding best practices. Their resources also explore which industries apply these skills and in what way, which is really good to know, especially if you're a beginner and you don't have this overview just yet. Having high quality free resources like these is very important, especially at the beginning of your coding journey. At this stage, you're probably trying to understand whether you like programming in the first place, and you can verify that through some of HubSpot's resources. They offer all kinds of material on various different topics, and they're all completely free, so I would definitely recommend checking them out. So thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring this portion of the video, and now let's dive into the study plan. This plan is obviously just my personal suggestion. This is sort of an improvement upon how I learned how to code. It doesn't mean that it is the right way or the only way to accomplish it. It's just something that I can recommend from my own personal experience because it worked for me. To start with, I would recommend learning some web development skills. With a few web development skills, you can already build little projects which you can use in your day-to-day -day life. You can write up a little to-do list or a little exercising app and this is something which will keep you motivated and engaged in the process. Nowadays practically every software engineer and data scientist has at least some sort of web development skills so it is really an area where you can't go wrong with. I would start by learning some HTML and some CSS then I would move on to learn JavaScript. At this step besides learning the language you will also become familiar with concepts which are common to most programming languages, which are variables and functions, loops, etc. Then I would learn a little bit of React. 
And after React, I would learn Node.js and Express.js so I can build a full stack web application. After that, I would practice a bit with REST APIs. I would learn how to read APIs and also how to create API endpoints. Then I move on to learning sort of the basics of relational and non-relational databases, what they look like, what they're good for, and how we can interact with databases. And then finally, I would look into how to deploy an application. And then we're at part two of the study plan, which is the computer science basics. At this part of the study plan, I would start by recalling some math concepts. So I would recall basic algebra and logarithmic and exponential functions. As a step two, I would recall or learn, if it's your first time, the binary system. And I would look a bit into Boolean algebra and logic gates. Once we have the math foundation, as a step three, I would learn big O notation. Big O notation is simply a way of analyzing and classifying the efficiency of algorithms in their worst case running scenario. Knowing big O notation, I would then start by learning data structures. The data structures that every engineer should know are arrays, strings, hash maps, linked lists, trees, queues and stacks, heaps, graphs, and tries. These are also very common interview questions, so if you're planning on applying for jobs later, this is something that you absolutely need to study. After understanding data structures, I would then study algorithms. Algorithms are a crucial part of computer science and studying some of the most well-known and most common algorithms gives you a solid foundation to work on if you ever need to do more advanced algorithms. Many engineers say that you don't really end up applying this knowledge on your day-to-day -day job. Obviously, it depends on what you work on, but I beg to defer. I have had instances on my day-to-day -day job where the knowledge that I have gained about algorithms has helped me in writing better code and more efficient code. It might not be that you implement these very specific textbook style algorithms, but the logical reasoning behind them or the way on how parts of them are implemented is something that you might have to do or that could help you execute certain tasks at work. So I do think that they give you a really good foundation to work on if you ever need to solve other sorts of problems. The algorithms I would recommend learning are the search algorithms. So linear search and then binary search, depth first search, and finally breadth first search. Then I would recommend looking into sorting algorithms and you don't have to like memorize how to implement all of them, but it is good to be familiar with the most common sorting algorithms and what their pros and cons are and what is the logic behind the sorting algorithm. So I would recommend looking into bubble sort, insertion sort, selection sort, quick sort, and heap sort. I would also highly recommend looking into Floyd's cycle detection algorithm. I personally really like this algorithm. I discovered it for the first time when I was trying to solve a leaf problem and I found the solution very clever and very interesting. And then obviously I also recommend looking into recursion and dynamic programming. Now we move on to the third part of the study plan, which is to learn more languages. And the two languages that I would recommend to learn after starting with JavaScript would be Python and or Java. Both Python and Java nowadays are widely used and widely requested by the industry. If you already know that you want to go more towards data science, then obviously Python is a better choice. If you think that you would like to work, for example, in the finance industry, then Python is also a good choice or C++. But if you think that you will want to work in tech, then I think Java is a really good choice to, to learn. If I had the time at this section, I would learn Python and then I would learn Java. And by the way, you don't need to become an expert in these languages, but I'm talking about perhaps doing an introduction course in each of these languages so you know the basics of how they work and their syntax. And if you ever needed to work on projects where these languages were being used, then it would be much easier for you to get started on that compared to if you hadn't learned these languages. Now, part four is system design. For system design, I would start by looking into servers. What are servers? What is the compute layer? What is scaling up versus scaling out? Then I would look into load balancers. And again, what do they do? Why are they important and why do we need them? Another concept you need to be familiar with are content delivery networks or CDNs. They are very important, especially, for example, for streaming services. Then I would look into databases, more specifically SQL versus NoSQL. What are the main differences and when should you use which kinds? And then it's important to study database partitioning and database replication, because these are the ways on how you can scale up your databases. Then you can look into caching, when to use caching, in front of which components and why. 
And finally, I would wrap up this part of the study plan by learning a bit about the cloud, whether it's AWS or Google Cloud or Azure. There are so many courses online which you can take to get an overview of how these clouds work and what kind of services they offer. And this is something which is really, really good because most companies use the cloud and most of them use one of the big three anyway. So you might as well get started with one of those. And finally, part five of the study plan is programming best practices. I would highly recommend learning about testing. So unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -end tests. Then I would recommend looking into object-oriented programming and gaining a lot of practice in writing code this way. And I would also recommend learning a few basic design patterns because there are a lot of design patterns in object-oriented programming as well. I would also recommend building at least one decent project that you can showcase. This can be in any of the parts that you see fit, and it can be done in any of the languages that you perhaps want to dive a bit deeper into. Try to build a project that you actually want to use yourself, something you can use in your day to day, or something that you would like to use for work or for something else. I would encourage you not to use AI assistance at the start of your coding journey. I think that when you're starting out, it's very important that you're learning by doing, that you practice a lot and that you gain this momentum when you're coding. And using an AI assistant that will auto-complete your code for you will really hinder your learning, in my opinion. Once you are more comfortable with programming, I definitely recommend using it because it will make you way more efficient and productive. But it is important to know what you're doing and what the AI is doing too, because if you don't, then that's sort of like a recipe for disaster. So that's it. That is my recommended study plan. And that's how I would learn how to code if I had to start over. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to reply to them. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and subscribe because it really supports my channel. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.